I am Janice McKinnon and this is the School of Public Policy. Today, Jack Mintz and I released a paper to tell Albertans what their real fiscal situation is. There are significant deficits for the foreseeable future, but actually even the, the high deficits that are there understate the problem because they're based on a very optimistic assessment of what the price of oil is going to be. The price of oil doesn't get to $68 a barrel. The debt and deficits are going to be higher. As you run bigger and bigger deficits, the credit rating agencies downgrade your credit, same as personal credit. Then you pay more in interest costs. So the costs of interest are going up and more and more of the tax dollars that you're spending to the government is being spent on interest rather than on programs. And if it continues to grow, it gets to the point that it's a crisis. And some of the things that we're talking about today that can be done without really causing a lot of pain to the public won't be enough. You'll have to take dramatic measures that will see cuts to people's positions and services. That's why we say the government has to act quickly and have a long-term plan. What the Alberta government has really failed to do is to take any measures to reduce spending. And there are things that they could do to reduce the spending so that the deficit isn't continuing to grow. We wanted to look at what can be done about the situation. So the first thing we did was we said, well, what is, what is Alberta's spending relative to the spending of comparable provinces, big provinces, Ontario, Quebec, British Columbia? Alberta's spending per capita is way higher than these other provinces. If you take the average spending of the other three big provinces, and you take Alberta, not down to the level that they're spending, but only to the half the level, you can save $6.6 .6 billion over a period of time. So what kinds of things can you do? You can look at the amount of money that Alberta is spending on infrastructure. We're spending more. Is it required? Is it needed? Actually, if you look at Alberta's infrastructure, it isn't as old as these other provinces. So you could reduce infrastructure spending. One of the misconceptions out there is that you can't impose salary settlements on unionized employees. You can, but you have to do it in a way that respects collective bargaining. Manitoba and Nova Scotia have followed that process. You establish a mandate. Here's what the wage levels are going to be for a period of time. You negotiate with the unions about how you can achieve that. You respect the collective bargaining approach, but if it doesn't work and there's a strike, you can impose the settlement. The other thing that's really critical about establishing a public sector bargaining mandate is it protects the government from an arbitration result. An agreement goes to arbitration, the arbitrator says, well, we're going to put in cost of living. If we actually had a cost of living settlement for all of the unions, we'd add $1.5 billion to the deficit. With a mandate, the arbitrators have to live within that mandate in their result. I think there are steps that you can take immediately, but what you really need is a long-term plan with fiscal targets. This year, the deficit is here, but next year it's going to be reduced to this particular level, the year after lower, to balance the budget. You need it for two reasons. You need the public to see a way out of this, and you need it to put discipline on the government so that they say, look, we can't just keep spending. We have to actually meet that target that we promised voters we would meet. I'm Janice McKinnon. This is the School of Public Policy. Thanks for watching.